I just gotta remember, we're in the final stretch. I can do this. Episode 7 opens with Velma continuing the mystery of her mother's disappearance with newfound confidence now that the story padding has been dispensed with forever. She looks high and low for any information that could relate to the word jinkies, all the while brushing off Daphne like activists do solutions. And when she comes home, Velma and Amon find Sophie on the floor in a pool of blood. Except it's a gag proposal for Amon, asking if he will go with her to Fogfest, an annual event in which the people of Crystal Cove celebrate the unusually dense fog. Does so little happen in Crystal Cove that a naturally occurring phenomenon is the focus of an annual celebration? Also, what is this dialogue? This was a fog posal! A fog posal? You know, like a prom posal, but for fog fest. Fog fest? And pick a fog king and queen. Celebrate? It's a word meaning. Are you having a stroke? No, I know what fog posals and fog fest are. This isn't a conversation between characters. This is the writers telling us what the event is because they think we're too stupid to figure things out on our own. Remember, this is Mindy and her writing team, and between them all, there isn't enough brain matter to occupy the skull of a goldfish. This is why the event is allowed to happen, despite the killer having not been caught yet. And in a rare moment, I agree with Velma, wondering why the fuck Fog Festival will proceed until Amon whips out a newspaper showing Blythe went to the local paper about this and everyone just believes her. God damn it. Well, later that night at the Jones Mansion, Freddy is practicing his acceptance speech in front of his parents. It is only when he mentions Velma will be his Fog Queen that his parents give him an ultimatum. This is what bothers me so much about Velma. It taps into decency every now and then, but consistently overcorrects out of control like a speeding boat. That next day, Olive complains about Norville to Gigi about ignoring her and the ghost, and Velma arrives to say there is no ghost. Now, wait a fucking second, I get some gags require characters to have single-digit IQs, which is becoming more and more common in real life now. However, it is one thing for someone to be the butt of a joke. It is entirely another when the self-insert character becomes the smartest in the entire town, because the writing team makes the rest of the populace dumber than Cletus Spuckler. Anyway, Norville scares the girls, asks Gigi out to Fogfest, and she agrees. In Norville's office, Velma scolds the idiot for going to Fogfest with a killer on the loose, but she ain't getting through to him because, remember, he called her when she was sneaking into the Jones Mansion out of boredom. Norville then suggests she should go as well to blow off steam, and after days or weeks of ignoring the person she loves, Velma finally sits down with Daphne. Trying to ask her out doesn't go well immediately, and is thus interrupted by Freddy, who's throwing wads of cash at Daphne to convince her to go to Fogfest with him. And out of spite, Daphne says yes. You can really tell the writers don't know how to court a woman properly. You don't throw money at them, you throw tacos. That evening, everyone heads for the festival, while Velma stays at home trying to figure out what jinkies means. After reading one of her mom's manuscripts, she realizes there might be a hidden message written in invisible ink. Holding the note over a lamp, a phone number appears, and it's the killers! I bet this will not be used to track the phone at all in later episodes. You know, like intelligent characters would. After identifying all the noises in the background, Velma concludes that the killer is at Fog Festival. Who would have fucking guessed? So Velma must figure out how to get in, and how can she do that? Well, she dresses as a man, complete with mustache. Once inside, Velma begins looking for and spots the killer from one of the rides. Meanwhile, Freddy and Norville compete for Fog King. Velma gives chase after the killer, and Daphne takes an interest in Velma, not realizing who she is. Then Velma loses the killer, but continues to attract women like... Olive, what is happening right now? Anyway, at the dance, Norville and Freddy get into a fight, while at the bathroom, Velma comes out of the men's bathroom before getting grabbed by a drunken Daphne and brought to the dance. Uh, hold the fuck up. She used a urinal? I, I keep forgetting it's 2023. So, Velma does the worm and concludes men can do anything they want whenever they want? Yeah, okay. So, Velma goes on stage and convinces everyone the killer is still on the loose and isn't a ghost, before we are treated to a bullshit montage about as accurate as MSNBC's reporting. After being named Fog King, Daphne takes Velma outside, still believing her to be Manny, and discusses how depressed she is that Velma has been ignoring her for weeks 
weeks after major revelations about her past. The two reconnect for a brief moment before Freddy interrupts and reveals Manny is actually Velma, which angers Daphne, who then storms off. Back in the dance tent, Freddy reveals Manny is Velma to the crowd and convinces everyone to make him Fog King. And they just go with this because the people of Crystal Cove switch allegiances faster than the mayor of Oaky Oaks. Then it is revealed Norville was already given the crown as he walks in with a kid he rescued from the water that he threw in in the first place. And he notices Gigi is missing. Down under the pier, Velma goes to talk with Daphne, asking for her forgiveness for blowing her off for weeks. Why are we already retreading what Norville did? What the hell? That is until the killer interrupts the two girls and they run off. Meanwhile, Freddy steals the crown from Norville and then a scene that threw me so hard for a loop I had to physically reset myself. Both Norville chasing Freddy and the killer after the girls is supported by the classic Scooby-Doo chase theme and even footsteps sound effects. Velma parodies two consistent jokes from Scooby-Doo, the goofy door teleporting and the costume switching during a chase, and one of them is played totally straight and falls flat on its face while the other kind of comes close to actually being funny. An old-timey photo booth! We can disguise ourselves! Daphne, that's stupid! It will take at least five minutes to change! Who would ever stop to put on a costume in the middle of a chase? So the two pairings crash into one another, and the killer catches up with them, and before the show can be permanently ended in the best possible way, the fog switches the knife with Chiros in one instance, and in the other, the killer runs away! The killer, with knife in hand, runs away! and for some reason, left the fucking phone behind. And before you can make sense of it, the cast goes home, because everything is hunky-dory. But Freddy in the Hall of Mirrors is taken by the killer. I get very sick and tired of the threats in shows, movies, etc. being played off as a joke. Stories like One Punch Man subvert that perfectly because there are many more layers to it, or anytime Bugs Bunny lampoons Elmer Fudd, which is totally fine because that's the gag. But Velma has zero reason to play around with a killer like this. It's the same thing that Ant-Man 3 did with MODOK and Kang by first introducing these major villains from the comics and reducing them to the threat level of Chucky in broad daylight on concrete. I thought we were done with plot conveniences. Why can the fog inexplicably teleport people and objects like this is the Lost Woods? Oh, but the fog was set up early in the episode, so your argument is invalid. That's bullshit, and you know it. This show has played everything straight until this point. There is no magic or ghost or anything extraordinary in the magical sense. The fog is plot armor and nothing more. If anything, it reveals the inconsistency of character. You know that old line, consistency is key? The same goes for characters. The killer knows Velma is trying to solve the mystery, so eliminating her should be the highest priority. Instead, the killer runs away at the cusp of victory, leaves a piece of key evidence behind, and then goes after Freddy. If I can't trust the killer to at least be consistent, then there is nothing left to try and invest me in or anyone else. Not that I was invested in the first place, I'm simply pointing out the show does not have any straws to grasp at, even for the most optimistic viewer. And with that, I'd like to round back to the biggest problem with this show. The humor. This is something that frustrates me about Velma, because some of these jokes actually come close to being funny. Oh no. I have to apologize. She kicked me so hard my tubes are now tied. Yes, but you hurt her feelings, which is way worse these days. Norval, stop! Going through doors like this isn't physically possible. Oh god, you're right! My entire perception of reality is crumbling! Wait, no, it's just a ride. Oh. The problem is, they're ruined by unnecessary dialogue, bad timing, or they run on like James Gunn wrote the script. Like, jokes like these should just end right after the punchline. Just end it. It's okay. And no, for those wondering, I wouldn't have blasted them for trying to imitate Scooby-Doo, because it would have then been Scooby-Doo. The argument of damned if you do, damned if you don't, doesn't always work, because these characters doing something they are known for in their origin story is acceptable. Velma just tries to have its cake and eat it too, all the while giving everyone else nothing but scraps, and it baffles me that Hollywood thinks we enjoy this. One and one-fifth episode add to the story, while the rest have more padding than Lenina Huxley's patrol car. It's just so fucking stupid. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.